Robert's terribly good until his batteries go down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Energize the <party>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, ready? Here we go. Labours. Bleeding. Indicators. OK, Robert, it's very exciting because... We've got another election. <laughs> The shortlists are in for the Oscars. Yes. But we're going to talk about the Labour leadership. What should we call these? The Jeremys? The Jeremys, let's call it the, the Jeremys. Jeremys yes. Excellent. Um, and we've got all our <clears throat> major players here to help explain what's going on. And of course, till April, don't get too excited, folks, because till, till April, Jeremy himself remains leader of the opposition. Yes. But there are lots of people vying to succeed him and to be deputy leader of the Labour Party, which is also its own elected position with its own yes. mandate. So... So we've got Jeremy benignly watching over it. Yes, uh, absolutely. Let's put, let's him, put him up, up there. there. Watching benignly from the allotment. And uh, down <clears> here, this sort of large, shadowy figure of Len McCluskey, head of the Unite Union, that has been incredibly powerful as a backer of the Corbyn yeah. regime in the Labour Party. So he's here because he obviously wants to retain this giant inf influence. Well, he's got a lot but to will lose, he, will he? will he be able to? I yeah. mean, Jeremy Corbyn's office was stuffed full of McCluskey allies. He had Carrie Murphy, he had Andrew Murray, he had Jenny Formby as the party general secretary, and, and Seamus Milne as well. So, you know, he's, he's probably got as much of an empire to lose as Jeremy Corbyn Absolutely. had. Absolutely. So... We've learned who's in the running, who's got through the initial yes. stage of being nominated by the MPs and MEPs. And so far, Len McCluskey's organisation has not yet declared who it's officially backing, but we think that it will be Rebecca Long-Bailey, yes. who is the sort of Corbynite left candidate. She's been desperately trying to say she's not the continuity Look Corbyn Barry candidate. Look what Barry Gardner doing here. So, he Barry, hasn't made... <laughs> so Barry Gardner... <laughs> Look, we were cutting out all the faces. Yes. At the point where we were cutting out the faces, Barry Gardner was thinking about standing. He didn't make it. Yes. There will be no Gardner's question time. Sadly, so bye-bye, yep. Barry. <clears throat> OK, Rebecca Long-Bailey, Shadow Business Secretary, very, very close to Jeremy Corbyn, yep. but she's not out in front. No. When this contest began, when it was clear that Jeremy Corbyn was getting lost the election, the left of the party, the Corbynites, needed a flag waver. Rebecca Long Bailey had been in place for a long time as their next generation candidate, a protege of John McDonnell. She was the one they were all pinning their hopes on. But it did feel like it's come a bit too soon for her. She's only been in the Labour Party for 10 years, and only been in Parliament for five. She's perfectly able, but she is still learning the way. And she hasn't fizzed out of the blocks, which has, means, therefore, that the front-runner in the polls so far there's one, is Keir Starmer, who was the shadow Brexit secretary, the man who led the Remain argument within the Labour Party. The fact that he is the front-runner may not be entirely coincidental to the fact that all of the Corbynite left are saying what they need is somebody who's not from London, not a man and not a Remainer. So you could see that in a, a runoff between these two, those criteria would favour one candidate. They would, they would, they would. But I think we should just emphasise quite how far out in, out in front Keir Starmer is at the moment. So when you look at the nominations You've from the... You've specifically told not to make this crib sheet visible, haven't you? Oh, God, I'm a reporter. I've got a notebook. What do you want me to do? So Keir Starmer <laughs> has got 89 nominations from the parliamentarians. Uh, 202, isn't it? Yeah, but it's plus the MEPs yeah, as course, well, remember. Yes. Mm. Rebecca Long-Bailey has 33. So that they are the two front runners, but you can see the scale of the yes. challenge if the leader of the opposition was voted on just by the parliamentary yes. party. But of course, of course it isn't. That is roughly the level of nominations that Jeremy Corbyn got when he stood. He only just squeaked over the line. Most of the MPs were against him. So support from the MPs themselves is certainly no guarantee of victory. Although, as you were saying, the only poll that's been conducted... Have I got to this poll too early? Yeah. As park you were it, saying, Lisa and Andy. It. Park the poll. <laughs> park the poll. <laughs> because I want to talk about Lisa and Andy, yes. who's my personal favourite. I know we're completely unbiased, but I like her very much. Mm -hmm. And also Jess Phillips got through. Let's clear the deputy and, leadership candidate. Yeah, oh, let's get the deputies out of the way. Len, Len, I'm putting you on the floor for a minute, Len, don't take it personally. Um, oh, Clive didn't make it either. Clive, no, no, but talk about Clive, because you liked him. I, I like him personally. I think he's interesting and clever. He's a former soldier and he could have been an interesting candidate for the Labour Party, but he's fighting for a lot of the same left space that Rebecca Long-Bailey and, to some extent, Lisa Nandy were fighting for, you know, in that Corbynite, soft Corbynite place. Yeah. And 
he just didn't make it. Yeah. So I'm afraid okay. he... Bye, Clive. Bye, Barry Gardner. Bye, 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 bye. Out. Now, Lisa Nand, she got 31, which is not bad. If you consider that Rebecca Long-Bailey, who's the official kind of left mm -hmm. standard bearer, as you've said, for Lisa Nand to get 31 and to be safely through is quite good. Just Jess right. Phillips and Emily Thornbury, they just made it through 23... 23 apiece. ...each, and, in fact... Even on the morning of the day the nominations closed, Emily Thornbury looked like she might not make it. So if we so rank them in MP order, it yeah. goes like that, doesn't it? OK. So we've got Keir Starmer, seen as possibly quite sort of sober prime ministerial and attempting to say, let's put factionalism behind mm -hmm. us. I've got people in my campaign from both the left and the right of the party. Let's sort of put the divisions behind us. We've got Rebecca Long-Bailey of the left, the left's candidate. Lisa Nandy trying to make a pitch saying we've got to bridge the divide between these two halves of our party, between the metropolitan kind of liberal wing of Labour and our heartland towns. Mm -hmm. She represents Wigan, yep. a leave seat, and she's been very interesting ever since the referendum on that idea of people who feel their whole culture has been left behind and they've been disenfranchised uh, in de-industrialised areas. We've got Jess Phillips... Birmingham MP, very, very outspoken. Very anti-Corbyn. And very, very anti-Corbyn. The most anti-Corbyn probably of the whole oh, lot, because she never served. And then Emily Thornby, who of course was Shadow Foreign Secretary, but has got a problem, hasn't she? Which is maybe why she only just made it onto the ballot in that, you know, which is she? Is she an anti-Corbyn Corbyn candidate or is she a continuity Corbyn candidate? I think that's quite quite tricky for her, possibly? It is. I don't know that I would ever have thought of her as a continuity Corbyn candidate. Obviously, another way of cutting these but candidates close to the would leadership, be this I way, mean... which is, these are the three who served under Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah. Lisa Nandy did briefly and then quit. Resigned, yeah. Jess Phillips never did. So these three all stuck with him. These two didn't. Emily Thornbury, prior to Jeremy Corbyn's election, would have been seen very much on the sort of... Blairite, Brownite end of the party, certainly no left radical. But she was Jeremy Corbyn's next door neighbour as an Islington MP. She stayed loyal, she got promoted. She, she had been sacked from the shadow cabinet by his predecessor for an odd tweet, essentially mocking people. She denies it, but essentially mocking someone for having England flags from their house. I think her problem fundamentally is that she's appealing for much of the same territory that Keir Starmer was appealing for. You know, well, she's another North loyal, London lawyer, lawyer apart yeah, from anything else. Yeah, that's also true. There's a lot of lawyers. Yeah. Those are all lawyers, aren't they? And the more mainstream, loyal to Corbyn group, who are absolutely not Corbynites, um, were pro-Remain, um, did oppose the leader of some of his more extreme positions, but she's essentially been blown out of the water by Keir Starmer. So far. So far, that's right. I mean, it's true. I think everything we stage. say, everything you know, we've got till April, and look what happened in 2015 when Jeremy Corbyn was elected. That's absolutely true. He came from nowhere. But it is quite hard to see the space that she carves out mm. for herself in this campaign because Keir Starmer has made a lot more of the running in the sort of centrist, safe candidate position. And if you want a real anti-Corbynite, you've got Jess Phillips. Lisa Nandy is sort of... Quite, as you said, I think a very interesting candidate who, had she not walked out of the Jeremy Corbyn shadow cabinet, would probably have been a very, very strong contender. Speaks to a different demographic, doesn't speak to sort of all the criticisms of London lovies. So I think, like you, that she is going to be a more significant figure in this campaign. I think Emily Thorne has got a lot of problems. She's been beaten to the punch by Keir Starmer, and I don't know that she'll recover. The other thing yeah. is, though, so you described Keir Starmer as leading the anti Brexit charge for Labour. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did, but he was the Brexit spokesman during a period whilst well, <laughs> in okay, which the let, Labour Party didn't take a clear position me... on Brexit. I mean, for example, if you were also a passionate Remainer, mm -hmm. for example, you might say, well, actually, Jess Phillips is my person because she's the most uncompromising Remainer. In fact, since declaring her candidacy, she she's gone as far as to hint that the Labour Party position might be rejoined. She obviously, she had, to, she had to, to row back. But that's, that's obviously where her heart lies, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Keir Starmer, in his very lawyer-like way has been treading a fine line between the Corbyn well, leadership and the Romani membership for his I, I, whole time in the Shadow Cabinet. I think, you know, when you are judging and criticising any of the people mm. who are contesting, you have to allow analyzing, for certain... Analysing, analysing. You have to allow for a certain fact. Number one is they're going to be members of the Labour Party, so they're all <laughs> going to be people who roughly... W who wanted the Labour Party to win the last election, even though it was led by Jeremy Corbyn. All these people campaigned to make Jeremy Corbyn prime minister one way or another. People who are most hostile to Jeremy Corbyn say, especially of the three who stayed in his shadow cabinet, well, they're ruined by this, they were part of the problem, they didn't stand up and fight. I think at some point you've got to say, look, there are people who, in the Labour Party, who decided that it was better to just stay in the tent and wait for their moment 
to pull the party backwards. And I think you have to give them that much in this contest. Um, with Keir Starmer, and that comes to the Brexit point you were making, I think Keir Starmer's view was, I need to be in the room, fighting the argument, pulling the party towards what I, Keir Starmer, consider to be a sensible Brexit policy. Nudge, nudge, nudge. Yeah, his position was we ought to back a second referendum. That was the party's position in the election. So, for good or ill, he did win that battle. So, so something else that obviously proved a huge problem for the Labour Party morally, as well mm. as in the election, was the anti-Semitism crisis. Mm. Keir Starmer has been mm. very forthright in saying that he signs up to all of the demands of the Board of Deputies all of British of Jews. But it was but very interesting it. the way he, it happened, though, wasn't it? Mm. Because it became impossible for yes. them not to sign up. So that's a break with the past for the whole slate. Yes. Emily thought it was remarkable. She, she wrote a piece for the Jewish Chronicle where she said the Labour Party needs to get down on its knees and beg forgiveness, which seemed excessive to me, <laughs> you know, as, 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 as a campaigning position. There will be florid language yes. in the next four months, I but, can But, you tell know, you. all of them understand what a mm. major problem this was. The only one, I think, who's got problems on the anti-Semitism issue is Rebecca Long-Bailey, not because I think she has any particularly bad form on this, but because she was so unquestioningly supportive of... Jeremy Corbyn, all the way through this process, didn't really push back against it in any way that we're aware of, and therefore is seen as a genuine backer of him during these problems. We know that Keir Starmer, we know that Emily Thornberry, even in Shadow Cabinet, did raise concerns and push back on these issues. So this is interesting, isn't it? Because our fellow journalists have been having a really fun time asking each of them yes. in turn, how many marks out of ten would you give Jeremy Corbyn for his leadership, having yes. lost the fourth general election in a row for the Labour Party? Rebecca Long-Bailey said ten, ten out, out of ten, ten which is going to hang over her, arguably, for the whole leadership contest. Emily Thornberry did a wonderful kind of three-part answer. I think yes. she did two out of ten for anti-Semitism, eight out of ten for firing up the membership, and zero, zero out of for, ten for, for winning, winning elections, elections yes. which is, you know, hard yeah. to argue, really. I think these were sort of, like, pretty low, I weren't can't they? Remember. I think Jeff Phillips was quite tough. But interestingly, of course, Keir Starmer, when asked this yep. awkward question about the dear sainted Jeremy, refused to answer... Now, that, of course, is the right way to proceed if you want to be leader of the opposition and, indeed, prime yes. minister one day. You have to know when to put people like us in our place yes. and not answer an embarrassing question. So that was probably quite a good sign of his capacity to handle himself, well, do you I think? Mean, or? It's a strange thing, isn't it? Because it wasn't a difficult question to dodge. The I'm not playing scores was the obvious answer, as you say. Jeremy and is a colleague I and a would friend. I wouldn't possibly... Anybody who thinks they could be Prime Minister to be good enough to swerve that question. And I think Rebecca Long-Bailey's error was not just saying 10 out of 10. It was walking into the trap in the first mm. place. It showed her naivety at two levels. Yeah, a bit and I callow. Think that's why it was, it was no good. After she'd made the mistake, everyone else had time to think about what they would say in response. So yeah. uh, Emily Thornbury's trick was to answer it in such a complex way that people have forgotten yeah. what she said. I'm just going to mention it because I like it, is that Emily Thornbury started to talk about herself as a tough old bird <laughs> because mm. apparently that's what Len McCluskey called her. Mm. And uh, she's sort of taken that as a kind of excellent, useful piece of personal branding, a bit like Theresa May adopted bloody yes. difficult woman, because she's going to need something to sort of break through, there is particularly against these two yes. who are sort of quite ideasy and very outspoken. I mean, there's an interesting question here, which is that right up to this leadership contest, almost everybody in the Labour Party was saying, we really need a woman leader. We're the, the only major political party well, that's it is never notable, been led by a woman. Well, it is notable, let's face it, yeah. And so that is an issue for Keir Starmer. There are plenty of people in the Labour Party who will agree with that. So I think, in a way... What Emily Thornberry was reminding people is, you know, actually, if it's him or me yeah. and you want a woman leader, it's me. The problem is that I think, in terms of outspoken and tough, there may be others... There may, there may well be others. ..with a claim on that. So, so the next stage is that they, they then have to go and secure 5% of all the constituency Labour parties... Or... ..to back them. Or three affiliate organisations, including two trade unions. Yes. So that's where we are now. Now, I think this is also very interesting, that Keir Starmer has already secured Unison, right. which is a huge mm -hmm. uh, trade union. And as we've said, the Unite Union of Len McCluskey, which is very left mm -hmm. in terms of its politics, has yet to declare that there are rumours that maybe Lisa Nandy can persuade one of the other the really GMB big perhaps, unions, yeah. mm. like the GMB, to back yeah. her because she's got such a sort of clear policy platform. Yeah. In terms of who's backing them, Jess Phillips is seen as the kind of choice of the Blairite wing, 
What I wonder is that when it, as it goes forward, mm. does that really start to hurt Jess Phillips being identified in that way? Because the others are all, all being asked to place themselves on, I suppose, what's the... Should we do a left-right thing? Yeah, so, and that gets quite tricky, right. actually. You know, I, I must admit, I would not left. have thought of Jess Phillips as being left. right wing. She's, but, but what she's become is anti corbynite If you define right wing as anti corbynite yeah. she's there. I mean, once upon a time, you might have gone something like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's maybe, interesting. I mean, she, so you know, when she is, arrived, you wouldn't yeah. have thought of her. As a Blairite. But she, when she's m very motivated by, you know, her background is kind of domestic violence, charities, yes. anti-poverty exactly. in urban Birmingham, all the rest of it. But she has made her priority, the idea that Labour has to gain power to help any yes. of these people, which in a weird way, so even daring to say... Blairism, yeah, even daring to say we should there. win, we should try and win, yes. she's, she's, she's sort, of, sort of out there. I, and I think that's absolutely right. I have to say, I don't think all five of these people will make it to the ballot. Um, Rebecca Long Bailey will make it. I'm sure Keir Starmer will make it. Like you, I think Lisa Nandy will make it. Not sure about these two. Yeah. I think she's going to have to get the constituencies. And are there enough of them at the moment? I don't know. So this is really interesting. So, so yeah, so after they get through this, the, mm -hmm. then that stage, then it goes to a ballot of the full Labour Party membership. And what's been very interesting about the only polling that's been done so far... It was very intelligently done. It was done by the Queen Mary Professor politics Bell, department, yeah. Professor Tim Bell. And they didn't prompt with names, mm. so it's really useful because it's not just popularity, it's also name mm. recognition and how well-known they are. And what was interesting is that Jess Phillips' name came up a lot yes. without prompting. Yes. On that measure, Lisa Nandy does re did really, really badly mm -hmm. and has very low name recognition. But, of course... Jeremy Corbyn was not mentioned spontaneously by members. And as Back I recall, don't know is still the top. Don't know is still the top. So, so I think all that, political surveys well, really don't tells know you, wins. But... What that really tells you is mm. that, that the membership is open to hearing from these people. Yeah. And I think it has relatively few preconceived views on any of them, apart perhaps from Jess Phillips. And she could still surprise them on the upside by her passion and her yeah, charisma. Yeah, and her charisma, yeah. But of course, Keir Starmer was out in front again. Yes. Any of these candidates, if they make it through to the ballot... Uh, they've got an audience that wants to, wants to hear from them and is persuadable. So, and I think this is where the, the, the other problem for Rebecca Long-Bailey comes in, is that you know, she'll have the left, which is in control of the party, mm. on her side. Mm. But when it comes to the party leadership, you have to have the charisma and the wow factor that pulls you um, over the line. Because it's not like some of those internal elections that Momentum can organise right. where they're running slates for yeah. people you've never heard of. This time, the members will have their own views of these candidates. OK, I'm glad you mentioned Momentum, because, of course, apart from the unions, Momentum is not an official affiliate organisation of the Labour Party. It's separate. But it's announced that it's going to ballot its members on who, who it should, should back. Mm. And that could be quite interesting, because, of course... It's quite an Albanian ballot, as I recall. What? Well, we shall see. Uh, it's a consultation of a sort. And, you know, you might you expect... You decision to back Rebecca long <laughs> You might, well, no, but Momentum itself no, was split, right? Because John Landsman, who's the founder of Momentum, he's actually in charge of yes. Rebecca Long-Bailey's official campaign. Yep. But Laura Parker, who's the other very senior person in Momentum, was, was back in Clive, Clive Lewis and mm. is very disappointed to see Clive Lewis drop out. So I think it's really interesting to see whether Momentum, in a way, tack left as many yep. expect them to, or whether they might, some of, quite a significant number of them, break, for example, for Jess Phillips, who's well-known, yep. seen as a fighter good on telly arguing the Labour case. You I know. think one of, the, I mean, one of the key issues that is really interesting so far, and I wouldn't expect it to be any other way just yet, is that very few of these candidates have actually articulated what they, where they are in a policy position. You know, you've got quite a lot of them are just saying... I said very few, didn't say none. <laughs> you know, what are them saying, you know, Keir Starmer, I think I'm in the of Rebecca Long Baby's saying, you know, what we don't want to do is throw the Corbynite baby out with the bathwater. There were problems, but, you know, I'm not looking to oversteer us. I think oversteer yeah. is the word, the other way. You've got... Just Phillips, who said, no, no, it's been a catastrophe, we need to sort it out. And as you say, Lisa Nandy, who's a bit more nuts and interesting about this, quite a lot of them are dodging what yeah. exactly you keep and what you go. Keir Starmer did a television interview and he was asked about all the nationalisations and the only one he actually specified was rail. I think there's an issue where, pe where people are projecting on, on, particularly on Keir Starmer, you know, he's tried to position himself as much more left-wing than people assume he is. Um, on Very the other, hand, so, on the yeah. other hand, he's been cautious about which policies he'd keep. And I think there's an element, and this is where he has risks, I think, element of if you keep this canvas too blank, eventually people will start to 
paint the wrong things on it as far as you're concerned. Well, absolutely. They might start to ask, well, where is it that you do stand? Yeah. I mean, although all of those conversations that I've heard and the interviews so far, when, when they all say, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater, sure. most of them do. And, and you do sort of, sort of wonder, well, which bit of the baby or the bathwater do you think the electorate Richard, you know, yeah. liked because it seems like the, the, the electorate pretty much threw the baby out of the bathwater in terms of, yeah. you know, Labour's offer. The, the line that many of them are peddling is the public liked our policies, they didn't like us. And that's roughly yeah. true, but you can't separate these no, two things. And also, what that doesn't allow for is the salience of any individual policy. If you say to the public, do you like the idea that energy companies should be renationalised, you might get a positive result. But if you say to them, how important in all the things that matter to you is this, it might well be quite a long way down. And so it's often a mistake people confuse salience with support. If we just, I just want to look up here at these people who want to be deputy leader of the yes. party, because they're sort of in this parallel process. Jeremy, I'm going to put you up there mm -hmm. for now. Because a lot of people have been interested that mm -hmm. Angela Rayner, Shadow Education Secretary, is not down here with this yes. lot because she's got a lot of potential. And she, I mean, talk about way out in yeah. head, she got 88 yeah. nominations from the Parliamentary Party for her yep. deputy leadership bid, and she probably would have got a decent number to get her through. Absolutely. So do we assume she's hanging far and she's going to become lead, lead, the leader after, well, yeah, after one know, of these? She's a flatmate of Rebecca Long Bailey's, yeah. and they did agree that they would not fight each other. Many people think the wrong candidate went for well, well, the, but the, she the doesn't mean, have the Corbynite cred. But the meanest thing that anyone said about Rebecca Long Bailey, she's not the best candidate even in her own flat, yes, which really is going, really isn't it? I mean, Angela Rayner's got an awful lot going for it. It would be quite a surprise if she loses yeah. the deputy leadership. And if she were to win and does it well, but they don't win the election, she's then... I mean, the deputy leadership is not a very important job. Um, but she would be well placed. She, if she were deputy leader, she would get a big job in the shadow cabinet. So I think she's an interesting figure and she has cut through. And you could certainly I mean, she's see quite, her... She's quite left, right? Well, she backed Andy Burnham originally in the leadership contest yeah. when Jeremy Corbyn won. So she's leftish. Leftish. Miliband she's left enough. She's left enough for the membership. Yes. I would say. I mean, Richard Bergen, who we've got here... He's he, the proper Corbynite candidate. He's the proper Corbynite candidate, and he didn't do very well at all. He got just squeaked, he just in, squeaked yeah. in with 22. Yes. So he's through to this next stage. But, see, the Corbynite ticket is Rebecca Long-Bailey and Richard Bergen. Yes. But he's not doing so well. Something to inspire. Yeah, um, that's right. I think it's going to take quite a big series of setbacks for Alain Jorain not to get... So, so Dawn, got, Butler, Dawn Butler... Dawn Butler, who did, actually did not do too badly at all in terms of nomination. She got... 29. She's actually probably to the left of Angela Rayner, do you think? Yes. She's, she's a very loyal Corbynite is, as well. Yes. Cor Corbyn's uh, front bencher. Um, Rosina Allen Khan, MP for Tooting, an NHS doctor. Mm -hmm. Didn't do too badly either. She got 23, so she's just through. She was the, the may, one who did that Love Actually video before she Boris did, Johnson yes. did it. You know, it's like, you know, don't vote for him, vote for her. Um, yeah. You know, I think she's got a lot of smarts and deserves to be up at the front of the party somewhere. Well, some of this is to do with placing a marker down, isn't it? If you're yes. an individual, you want to put yourself forward so you're in the shadow cabinet. And, and this Labour's guy's leader interesting. in Scotland, oh, Ian he's, Murray. He's nameless. How appalling. I'm so sorry, Mr Murray, if you're watching. I do apologise. The thing that's interesting about him, 34, you see, that's pretty decent. Yes, it that is. That is pretty decent. Now, I've he has the unanimous support of all the party's Scottish <laughs> MPs. Because he is the only, one. only remaining Labour MP yep. in Scotland, which is extraordinary. If we were having this conversation five years ago, you wouldn't think that was possible. He's the only Labour MP in the village. But that makes it impossible to ignore his voice, because if you don't listen to the one person who's yep. carried on making it work in his Edinburgh seat, when all yep. around you Labour has kind of crashed to defeat... Now, he's had to go around denying that he's a Blairite. Yes. <laughs> because he's been, again, such an outspoken critic of the Corbyn style of leadership and the left-wing policies. But I've, I'm putting him here on the, yeah. on the right hand. But, you know, anyway, he's had to disavow the idea are, of Blairism. I think there are two ways to view this, 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 this appendage Blairite. Yeah. You know, there is the way that says neoliberal, very, you know, pro-market, the policies of New Labour and Tony Blair. And... Nobody who pushes those is going to win this leadership election. That's just not where the Labour Party is now. Indeed, it's not where the economic argument is. It's not where Boris Johnson is. So, but there is another meaning of Blair, I, I think, which is do what you have to do to win because the truth is, you, however pure you are, it's no use to anybody mm. if you've lost. And I think... Well, that's the That's, the that's where Jess Phillips and others so I think, are going to have to do something. And I think Angela Rayner is a little bit in that camp as well. Yeah. 
And I think that's going to be the dividing line eventually in this contest as it shakes up. You know, these people, they're going to be doing hustings all over the country. They're going to be on the same platform in umpteen different places all through the week saying the same thing. Their speech is never going to change. But eventually, to break through, one of them is going to have to say something interesting. And... <laughs> But, which actually is what Jeremy Corbyn did. One of them is actually going to have to say. To fail, Robert. One of them is actually going to have months. to say <laughs> something meaningful and decisive that says this is the direction the party needs to go into. And I think there must be an exhaustion within Labour Party members. They've lost four elections in a row. That says, what do we need to do to win without selling our souls? And I think that's where victory will slowly. And the other thing they need is somebody mm. who can actually cut through because it's very difficult being leader of the opposition in a parliament where you have nothing close to a chance of defeating the government. Well, they're Boris not going Johnson, to be making the news, no. are they, by uh, so they've got threatening to a defeat for the government? They've got no. to find other ways mm. of damaging the government and being listened to. And I think they're going to find that quite... It's going to come as a shock to them. Labour hasn't been irrelevant in parliament since 1987 or something. So they're going to find it quite hard yeah. to make themselves heard. And they're going to need people who can cut through and that's where I think Keir Starmer's biggest weakness is. For all the professionalism and competence, and there's lots of good reasons to support him, he's not the most exciting candidate. So, I will conclude by saying that when uh, Tim Bale and his crew did similar polling in 2015, mm -hmm. as they've done with this lot in the last few days, Jeremy Corbyn had less name recognition and less level of support than even people who are currently running for yeah. deputy, but not for leader. So it really is all to play for. Four months of hustings. Yes. So I guess by the end of it, we're saying that it could actually be any of them, because although Keir Starmer is way, way out in front, it's a long process, and it's potentially quite an unpredictable process. I think we don't yet know about lovely Len and where his support is going to go, although clearly he would probably do. want them <laughs> I think want it we to do. be for Rebecca Long Bailey. But will that, alien, you know, will that alienate the membership? They've seen him back Jeremy Corbyn into a disastrous corner on policy and Look, positioning. I think the arguments, you know, you've got yeah. most loyal to Jeremy Corbyn, probably the most charismatic, mm. most obviously exuding managerial professionalism. Mm. Um, and most ideasy. Um, dark horse ideasy candidate. Mm. And I'm, I don't think anyone's going to make it, so something else. Yeah, something else. <laughs> something okay, else. Well. Let's do this again in a few weeks. <laughs>